the impact of the global use of fossil fuels, the carbon cycle. In this video, we're going to look at the annual global energy profile and see the global consequences of using fossil fuels and how this is reflected in the carbon cycle. This diagram shows the five main sources of energy currently used by the United States to supply energy for the demand sectors. The data is from 2008. As shown on the diagram, about 85% of energy used in the United States is supplied through fossil fuels. As can be seen, about 22% is for residential uses. The remaining is used for commerce, industry, and transportation. The global picture is slightly different, with about 65% of the use being in the form of fossil fuels. The next largest energy resource is plants, at 28%. What are the implications of using fossil fuels to obtain energy? In order to obtain the chemical energy in fossil fuels, we need to combust the fuel, which results in carbon dioxide. So the burning of fossil fuels to produce a good or service, in a sense, embeds carbon dioxide in that good or service. For the United States, this results in this annual picture, where you can see that we are net importers of embedded carbon dioxide. That fact is indicated by the arrows, with these larger arrows indicating larger imports of embedded carbon dioxide. The measure here is megatons of CO2 per year. Is it necessary for us to use energy for these purposes? That's a very important question for our time. And we won't answer that here, but let's consider how this resource use profile affects the global system. Recall that the Earth is a close thermodynamic system. It cannot significantly change matter with the surroundings. It's a little like a jar with a lid. If we burn fossil fuels in the jar, we increase the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. The simple idea is that increasing pressures of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere over our closed jar will cause the liquid, in our case, the oceans, to absorb more CO2 absorbs CO2 in water, converts to carboxylic acid, and thus has the effect of killing off the organisms in the ocean that are the basis of the global aquatic food chain. In a nutshell, that expresses the problem of using fossil fuels, aside from the fact that, as you may recall from a different video, that fossil fuels are a non-renewable resource. Let's take a closer look at the carbon cycle. This side depicts the natural and the anthropogenic carbon cycles on the left, and on the right is a detailed picture of where the resulting excess CO2 from anthropogenic activity of burning fossil fuels is being stored. There are essentially five geochemical compartments that act as reservoirs for CO2. The largest reservoir is the lithosphere, which is essentially the Earth and that is where the fossil fuels are being stored. The hydrosphere is the second largest, which is the ocean. And then you have the pedosphere, which is the soil. The biosphere, which comprises the plant life. And then the atmosphere. Now notice that together, the atmosphere, biosphere, and pedosphere are less than 0.1% of the compartmental storage of CO2. So what does the picture look like annually? Well, there's an exchange between the biosphere, pedosphere, and atmosphere that is an equilibrium exchange. There's an equilibrium exchange between the atmosphere and the ocean. Now, human activity perturbs the natural cycle. So on top of the natural cycle, we have fossil fuel combustion and cement production, which contributes 5.4 petagrams per year. Also, the land takes up some of that, but the land use change contributes some back. So the net effect is that the atmosphere uptakes more than 3.3 petagrams per year of CO2. Now, there's also a net uptake by the ocean. So as explained in our jar analogy, the ocean is taking up more CO2 than it would in a a natural cycle. I want to show you a more detailed picture of the carbon flow in the biosphere. This light blue represents carbon dioxide in gaseous form, whereas the dark blue represents carbon dioxide in aqueous form. As we said, that converts to carboxylic acid. This green color represents carbon in plant matter, 
whereas the this gray represents carbon in rock form, the brown represents carbon in fossil fuels, and the this lighter brown represents the soil uptake of carbon. So these balloons indicate accumulation of carbon in the, its different forms, whereas these lines represent carbon flux. And the measure here is megagrams carbon per second. So these lines are flow, and these balloons represent essentially a stock. So what this picture shows you is most of the carbon is stored in, in a lithosphere in the form of these fossil fuels. And there's a great deal stored in the ocean as well. The way that carbon flows in this picture is that there's the balance in, in photosynthesis between the plant life and the atmosphere. So gaseous carbon and carbon in plant matter. Some of the carbon is able to be dissolved in through the process of erosion and weathering. However, as you can see, what's happening here is this oceanic uptake and the atmospheric accumulation of CO2. The predominant global use of fossil fuels as an energy resource causes accumulation of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. This atmospheric accumulation in turn causes an increase in the carbon dioxide concentration in the ocean, which is the largest geochemical reservoir for gaseous carbon dioxide. The problem caused by the oceanic carbon dioxide uptake is that it acidifies the water and threatens the foundation of the aquatic global food chain. In the next video, we look at the greenhouse effect and renewable and non-renewable energy resources.